Hi, I'm John. Thank you for joining me for the fourth and final installment of how to make a drought map. In part three, we did three maps. We made the bivariate drought map, we did the optimus drought map, we did the moving this drought map. And now we're going to make a layout. So here I am. I've inserted a layout and I'm going to modify the size of this layout to be 17 by 17 inches. So this will be a square layout and we're going to bring in all three maps. So we insert our main map, which is the standard bivariate drought map that we made. And I'll drag in an area here, and the drought map will render in. But I need to fine tune this size and um, just so it doesn't uh, miss any of my layout. So I'm going to make this 17 by 17 with 0x, 0y. And I'm going to get rid of the black default outline, which I can't stand in map frames in layouts. So there it is. Um, now I'm going to turn back on my USA mask layer. And I'm also going to turn on the topography base map that we styled in a previous video. And you can see a little bit of a beautiful piece of Alaska down there, but we uh, want to get rid of that. Sorry, Alaska. So we're going to activate this map view and pan it up and then go back into our layout. And now it's time to insert some of our other map elements. So here's the Optimist drought map. I've selected this and I'm going to just drag out a rectangle for I want for where I want the Optimus drop map to live. And you'll notice that, um, by golly, those blue dots are way too big. What's the deal with that? Um, that's okay, we can we can fix that. So I'm gonna get, well, let's see here. Why is it my hill shade? So my hill shade wasn't drawing on my main map and it was bugging me, so I just refreshed the layout and now it's there. Okay, cool. So. For our Optimus drought map, um, because it's smaller in the layout, it's still drawing at the size I told it to in the map. And um, there's a trick you can do. So if you right click this map and set the reference scale, then your map will draw at that scale in any instance in your project, which is really cool. So now the sizes look adequate, right? They look good. Um, and I'm also gonna get rid of that outline, the pesky outline. Okay, so we've got a main map, we've got our optimists map. Now I'm going to select this map frame and I'm going to duplicate it. I just hit paste, copy and paste. I'll click away from something and then hit paste. I'm going to drag this copy over. So here's the second map frame. But instead of my optimist drought map, I'm going to bring in my movingness drought map. So right clicked the map frame, I've gone to the properties and I just switch which map I want it to point to. And when it loads in, it's going to load to the full extent of the data because it has all those drought polygons in it, which include Alaska and Hawaii, so it's zoomed out. Um, so what I'm going to do is copy the scale that I have for the Optimus drought map, and I just paste that scale in for the map frame that's holding the, the movingness. And I mean, it didn't center it perfectly, but that's cool. I can right click, activate, and just scroll it right up to where I want it to be, positioning it manually. You could also fine tune this in the properties if you really wanted to, but this is good enough for me. So there it is. Now we've got our three maps in our layout. We've got the main map and we've got the two supplemental maps. And now I'm going to insert a little uh, well, not little, a big text box for the title of this thing. We have to call it something, right? So I'm going to call it Drought 2018 because it's all 52 weeks of drought, all aggregated together. Looks like this. And obviously I want to change how that looks. So I'll go into the text symbols appearance and choose Century Gothic, which is a nice font that pretty much everybody has. Um, and I'm going to make it huge. See how that looks. All right. Now, instead of a solid black, I'd like it to fade a little bit and look a little bit diminished visually. So I'm going to choose a gradient fill and I'm going to give it a neutral gray and the same neutral gray, but fade it all the way to fully transparent. So it's just kind of a nice little glassy effect for the title. And let's check out how that looks. Looks good. So um, I'm also going to play with the letter spacing. Letter spacing in maps is really important. Um, Typically, I like to say, whatever you're thinking for letter spacing, add a zero and then double it. It's crazy, but it's good stuff. So there we have a title, 
Drought 2018. So for my Optimist drought map, see how that's got those little service credits for the um, topo layer there that I got from the Living Atlas? If I insert dynamic text and then click away, um, I can have more control over that. And it only renders once now instead of in all three maps, which is kind of a pain. So now I'm inserting a rectangle. It's going to be just like a, a black bar down at the bottom where my credits can live. Always credit your work. And so I'm going to give it kind of a, a, a slightly darker than the background black or gray, dark gray. And I'm going to just use this as a place for the credits to live. And I'm going to drag in the dynamic automatic credits that Pro gives me based on the, the base map that I'm using. Um, and I'm going to drag it to the top so you can actually see it. And I'll give it the same you know, sort of style. But in this case, it'll just be a solid medium gray century gothic and this is saying you know all the um, data providers who have contributed to the topo bathy base map which we styled in a previous video um, but n now that it's just regular text we can um, we can do more with it i can give it a title like topography and then there's the little chunk of dynamic text and i can say accessed via the living atlas which is where i got it which you should check out, by the way. It's a cool resource. And we'll make it big enough so you can actually read this guy. And I can click the control key and use my arrows to fine tune the position of anything in a layout when it's selected. So now I'm duplicating this, copied it and pasted it. Control C, Control V, by the way, if you've never done that, um, you're welcome. That's a lifesaver. Drought. I'm going to give this like uh, a a data source for the drought day that we got from the US drought monitor. So I'm Googling for this. No, uh, let's just type in the full name and we'll go here and see if they have any requests about how they would want to be cited. So in the data section under GIS data, there's a piece right there, this blue highlighted area. They say, if you use this data, we'd like it if you cited us in the following way. So let's go ahead and cite them in the following way and prefix it with their name, the United States Drought Monitor, an amazing resource, weekly drought polygons, it's incredible. And there it is, so we've got our credits down there in the bottom. Now you would add your name here because you're the cartographer and you should always sign your work. I haven't, don't do what I'm not doing. Do what I'm not doing, not do yes what I'm doing. Anyways, let's title our mini maps here. So this is the optimist's drought map, which, you know, is just a sneaky reversal of the symbology of the drought map. You know, where hasn't it been drought? And we'll make it a lot smaller, obviously, um, to be commensurate with its size in the layout. That's still a little big, so I'll make it 12 point. Let's see how that looks good. And I'll bring that, snug that box in a little bit, the text box that it's living in, and position it just so. Um, your balance, you want to have a good balance in your layout, things kind of lined up with each other. And I can tell my Optimus drought map is nudged over to the left a little too far, but that's no big deal uh, for this. I would fix it in, in real life. And I'll title my second mini map, The Movingness of Drought, kind of showing how the borders of drought and change throughout the year. Now I've grabbed those hex values from my drought color that I've used in my main map. And now it's time to manually draw a legend, which I do a lot. I very infrequently rely on the, the automated legend tools. I like to draw my own legend and have full control. So I'm gonna reach into the symbol that I used and save it as a style for my project. And now I can just insert a point and um, point to that uh, point style. So I don't have to redraw the, the glassiness and cool stuff that we did in a previous video. And here I am just duplicating this control paste and I'm manually tweaking its location with the control key and the arrows. And I want to have five of them going across. And then I can just do a kind of a quick wholesale select and duplicate and tweak the position of boom, 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 boom. So we get a nice array of hexagons that we can start sizing and coloring to explain our map. And here are those colors again. I'll copy this one, the brightest one. I can select all of them, go into the symbol properties, and just um, paste in this hex value. And it's not there. Oh, because I have it fully transparent. 
So instead of 100% transparency, I'll give it 0%, hit apply, and there it is. All right. So then it's just a matter of grabbing the next hex value for my color scheme and pasting it in, um, so on and so forth. So you kind of go down that list of the really nice Viridis color scheme of a bright light yellow down to dark um, purplish, almost black. Now it's time to play with the scale of these things. So one dimension is color and the other dimension is scale. So I'll set it from three going up a point every row here. So we've got columns showing one data and rows showing another data. This looks pretty cool, right? Like when hexagons align with each other in this way, it just looks snazzy and dynamic. So I'm gonna group this, orient it 45 degrees so that um, drier, hotter, more frequent stuff is at the top, the apex, which is kind of a nice natural mapping. And now it's just a matter of legending these things or labeling these things, labeling the legend. So size means how frequently it was in drought and color means how intense that drought was overall. And then we'll just give this guy a nice little overall title. There you go. We've made a, a manual legend and we can export it as an image. There is the completed, the completion of all these efforts. Thank you for joining me so much. I've had a blast making this map with you. Uh, if you make a map or something like it using this, then uh, show me what you've made. And it's an honor. Have fun.